Hi, my name is Clay Johnson. I'm from Coley Sales, and I'm going to be showing you how to set up your sunfish rig. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lower boom, and I'm going to remove the cap. You take a punch and a hammer, and you're going to punch out these little pins into the black plastic cap. These pins hold the cap in place so that it doesn't go anywhere. These are punched out. The cap should come off pretty easily. You should dump the pins out so that you don't lose them and can reuse them when you put the cap back in place. So I have the cap and two pins. Next, your gooseneck looks like this. It comes with a standard bolt and nut. This is going to slide on and be tightened into position. Instead, what a lot of the top end guys do is use an adjustable uh, release valve instead of the uh, bolt and nut so that if you want, you can quickly loosen this up and move the gooseneck while sailing to a more ideal location and then clamp it tighter. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to try and put this on and slide it in place. Now this one slides pretty easily. Sometimes it can be a little tight and hard to slide at first. You can take a flathead screwdriver and put it in here and lay open the gooseneck a little bit so that you can slide it into place more easily. I slid the gooseneck into position, I put the gooseneck on the starboard side. I measured in 15 and a half inches, which is a good all around starting spot for your gooseneck. And then I put the adjustable part in, tightened it and clamped it tight. So it's locked into position. Now I'm going to put the cap back on. It's important that this little nub is facing down. And the reason is that when your boom gets set on the boat, the nub prevents the interlocking eye bolt from scratching the deck of your boat. So I'm going to put this cap back on and then I'm going to take those pins that we took out from before and tap them into place. Next, I'm going to install the interlocking eye bolts to connect the lower boom with the upper boom. It's really important that when you do this, you make sure that the eyelet at the top of your upper boom is facing in because that's where your, the top of your sail is going to be tied to. I actually put them on one at a time. I'm going to go through here and this can be a little tight. So sometimes you have to twist and push it in put the interlocking eye bolt through, I put the nut on, I'm going to hold it in place with the pliers. Then I actually use this as leverage and I tighten this interlo interlocking eye bolt. And I try to make it pretty snug. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the upper boom. So I put the two interlocking eye bolts in, the, the one on the lower boom is protected by this little cap here, and they're through and they're snug and everything's lined up perfectly. Now it's time to tie on our sail. So we have our spars laid out and our sail laid out. I always like to start at the top uh, with a corner tie. This is going to go around twice and tie pretty snug to the upper boom with a square knot. All rigs, whether they're the club rig or a racing rig, need to be lashed at the top. So we're going to take this line and we're going to go through a couple times and then lash this in the up position. And that's just so that the sail doesn't slide down when the cutting ham is pulled on. Now, conversely, at the outhaul end of the sail, if it's a wreck setup with the rings and no outhaul adjustment, you also need to lash this line. If it's a race setup with the adjustable outhaul, then you would not need one of these lines because the outhaul is going to be moving the sail back and forth. After the corner, I'm going to move down and do all the individual ties. We have these Spectre sail ties. Again, they go around twice and get tied with a square knot. We usually leave a little bit of room between the sail and the spars just so that when you tack, the sail can easily flop from side to side. Sometimes you might want to adjust this depending on how much breeze there is, but maybe about a credit card's width or something off of the boom, the upper boom is probably appropriate. Now I'm at the outhaul end and I'm going to do the same thing I did up top, which is take one of these thicker corner ties and go around twice and tie it snug to the boom with a square knot. I don't have to worry about lashing this end to here because the outhaul is going to be pulling it in or out depending on how we set it. Then I'm going to move down the foot of the sail and do the similar thing I did on the upper boom, which is to go around twice with these spectra ties and tie a square knot and maybe a little bit looser off of the boom on, um, on the bottom here because we want the sail to flop from side to side more easily when we tack. Now I'm going to tie the outhaul on. So I'm going to start by taking the red outhaul and I go through the opening. I'm going to go through the grommet and then I'm going to go back to this opening and I'm going to tie it off here. You can do a couple different knots. 
a simple bowl in, an Australian bowl in. I'm just gonna tie a nice small bowl in. Maybe leave a little tail just so I know that it doesn't come out. And try and make it as close to this plastic fair lead as you can so that you have as much room as possible to tighten this. Now I'm gonna come down about here and I'm gonna add some purchase. So I'm gonna use a thimble. You don't have to use a thimble, but it's just kind of look kind of looks good. And I'm gonna do an overhand knot. Pull it nice and tight like that. Then I'm gonna take the tail. I'm gonna make sure there aren't any knots in it. And I'm gonna go through the cleat. And then I'm gonna go back through the thimble. And then I'm gonna go through the cleat again, like this. Now there's some extra line. With this, what I like to do is I'll tie a daisy chain handle. You can cut it off if you want. Um, the reason we have extra line is if you really want this purchase can be significantly longer. I think this is probably plenty, but I'll tie a nice daisy chain handle. Now I'm gonna do the Cunningham. So with the Cunningham, we're gonna go through the grommet for the Cunningham, and we're gonna bring it down, and we're gonna tie it off down here at one of these interlocking eye bolts. Um, I don't think it matters which one, it just needs to be tied off someplace. Again, gonna tie a nice small bowl in. This is gonna come down, and it also is gonna go through one of the interlocking eye bolts. And it's gonna go down here. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the out hole, which is we're gonna go through the cleat, and then we're gonna go back. I like to have this on the rear side of the gooseneck. I'm gonna put my thimble in. I'm gonna go back to the thimble and then back to the cleat. And then again, I'm gonna tie, it looks like this, so you have some nice purchase and you can pull the Cunningham down like that. And I'm gonna tie a nice daisy chain bowl, chain bowl and handle. Now, one other thing we do is I like to make the Cunningham one color and the out hole another color so that when both bowlins are dangling and hanging and you're rounding the lured mark and you need to pull on a line, you know which is which and it's easier to identify them. Now we're gonna tie the sunfish halyard on. First, we go up about 108 inches or so from the bottom of the upper boom all the way to here. It's between about the ninth and the 10th ring, or sail tie rather. Um, this number is subjective. It can definitely range depending on the breeze you're in or where you wanna set it, how far off the deck you want the boom to be. But for this knot, I'm gonna go underneath. I'm gonna go around once. And I'm gonna go around twice, just like this. Then I'm gonna wrap it underneath. I'm gonna go under this and under this and under this. And then I'm gonna go over the one on the right and underneath the other ones again. And you kind of have to do it loosely at first like that and then snug it up tight. Now, this should hold in, in place under load. I always leave a tail to make sure that it doesn't come out and then the other thing I like to do is I like to take some electrical tape and go over top of it. And that'll just really make sure that it's locked in and doesn't move around up or down or whatnot. Again, it's subjective. Some people change it every day based on the conditions and you can easily move it up and down as you please to. But this is a good all around setting for where to tie it. To review everything we did, the first thing we did was we tied on, we lashed the top of the sail to the end here so that keeps it from sliding down. We used a thicker corner tie, square knot, twice around. Down the, mat, the upper boom, we did two laps on each of these ties, about a credit card width off the sail, um, just enough for it to flop from side to side when you tack, square knot with a safety knot. Here's the halyard, we did our halyard knot and then taped over this. This distance is about 108 inches from the bottom. Keep walking down at the bottom, we have our gooseneck with the adjustable quick release on here facing starboard. Here we have our Cunningham with the purchase built in so that it's easy to adjust. And then down there we have our outhaul in red with the purchase so it's easy to adjust. And these two lines are different colors to distinguish them quickly on the water. And lastly, oh, the sail ties rather. Um, these are a little looser on the boom just so that the sail can flop over side to side more easily. And then down here, another place around with a square knot, pretty snug. And we dead end us here and go through the grommet and back to start the outhaul. Um, I'm Clay Johnson from Coley Sales, and we hope this video helped you out.